So first we'll construct these clouds like you see here. This is a very useful technique to know how to do, not only in making clouds, but making atmospheric dust to add to 3D renders or to add to your 2D compositions. So let's get started on this. Let's create a new comp, call this clouds, and we'll make a new solid. Let's call this clouds and apply track code particular. First thing that I'm gonna do is turn the velocity of the particles way down. I'm turn this down to zero. We don't want our clouds shooting in all directions, so they're going to stay relatively stationary. Now I'm going to set the emitter type to a box. And we need this box emitter to be extremely large. However large we want this field of clouds to be, the box itself is going to be that large. So this could be in the thousands and thousands of pixels here. Again, this is just the size of the emitter. We'll fill this in with clouds later on. Now, we'll move the emitter itself down a little bit so we'll end up above this field of clouds. Now let's tweak the particle type so they look a little more cloud-like. Let's jump into the particle type here and set this to smokelet and turn the size of the particles up. We're getting close already. Let's turn the opacity down to about 10%. And let's turn up the opacity random. So we're starting to see some variation in the opacity. Now really where this comes together is where we turn the size random up. What we want are large variations in the size of our clouds. We want large billow shapes and small detailed sections. So I'm gonna turn this size random all the way up to 100%. So we have lots of variation in our clouds. Now I'm going to turn the emitter size and Y down just a little bit to make this a little smaller. And let's move this down just a little bit more. Now if I turn up the particles per second, I should start to fill out our cloud shape here a little bit more. And by and large, that will get us the bulk of our clouds. Now, what we have to be mindful of is that this is a particle generator. It's going to generate a particle, it'll do something, and then it dies. So we have to be mindful of the fact that we don't want to see cloud shapes popping in and out of sight. So we have to make sure to go into our opacity over life, tap the tilde key, and have this fade up and down. From birth to death, the opacity will fade up, and then fade down, rather than have a hard cut on and off at the beginning and end of the particle life. So this will smooth out the life of each of the particles, and we won't see anything popping into place, which is going to be ideal. Now from here, it's important to understand that because Particular is a 3D particle system, this will respond to camera moves. So if I create a camera, and I'd like to move my camera through this field of clouds, I can do that. So I'm just gonna select a couple keyframes for camera position. Now, we are generating a lot of particles here and this is going to be rather slow moving. So what we can do to speed this along is at the very bottom here, our render mode can be set to motion preview. And what it's gonna do is put a very small dot where our particle is. It'll substitute the cloud for a point. This will render tremendously faster. So now I can have my camera move from front to back and do sort of a sweep over the clouds here. I'm just moving my camera back to the edge of the clouds here. And I might need to adjust this emitter size X even more. So now the camera will start here and then move over the clouds like that. I'll set this Z emitter size to be a lot bigger. Jump back down here, turn our render to full render. And really, all we need now is to drop a background in there to make it seem a little more like a sky. So I'm just gonna create a solid, put that in the background. I'm gonna go into my layer styles, select gradient overlay, and click on edit gradient. And 
we'll do a little bit of a light blue to darker blue. Now, because we've selected smokelet rather than cloudlet, smokelet has a little bit of internal shadowing in it. So we do have some control over the shadow color. And we can go into the options here and define that smokelet shadow color in RGB color here. I'm going to turn this down so it's a little bit darker and turn that strength up. I'm going to fill this out a little bit more by turning the particle count up and then do a quick render of our camera move here. As we're seeing, our clouds are fading up from very first frame, frame zero. So if we'd like to have them start from the very first frame and be there on frame zero, I'll set the pre-run to 100%. Now if I rewind to zero, we should see a full field of clouds there. Let's do a little bit of a render here. So next, with what we've learned here, let's take this one step further and take a layer, which is a text layer in After Effects, and sort of dissolve it away, and as it dissolves, have it turn into smoke. So let's see how to do this. I'll create a new comp, call this smoke, and create a solid for this. Let's apply trap code particular, and I also need my layer emitter. So I'm just going to create some type using the After Effects type tool. And put it right in the center. Now, when we're using layer emitters, which is what we're about to do, we want to emit particles from this type. We're going to have to have it be set a couple different ways. We have to make sure that what we're using as a layer emitter is a 3D layer. This is just something that particular requires. So the layer itself has to be 3D. Now, if I go into my emitter type and I select this layer, this smoke layer, to be used as my emitter, it's going to tell me that text layers cannot be used as layer emitters. Essentially what I need to do is pre-compose this. The problem is that type in After Effects does not have any source material. It's made on the fly inside the comp itself. So to get around this, all we need to do is pre-compose this. So this will be our smoke type. And I need to make sure that that layer is 3D. So let's set this layer back to none. Click on 3D and select the smoke type as our layer emitter now. Now this is working just fine. Problem is, we're not seeing a whole lot of particles. We're going to need to turn this particle count way up. I'm going to turn this to something like 4,000, so we have a lot of particles. And notice they're only emitting from the areas that are opaque from the source layer. Now, to give this a little bit of smoke-like motion, let's have this rise upward using some negative gravity. And at about two seconds, we'll shut off the emitter so it stops emitting particles. So set a keyframe there and turn this down to zero. So it'll emit and eventually stop. Now let's set this particle type to be a smoky kind of particle, which we've done before, so I'll do this quickly. We'll go into the particle type here and select cloudlet this time and turn the size up. Turn the size random all the way up to 100 and turn the opacity down to about 10. It's pretty smoky. Actually, let me turn this up size down to about 20. It's a little big right now. There we go. So we see the smoke coming from the area of the type. Now we can see the particles sort of popping on as they're born. So we need to make sure to 
fade these up and down. And that's a function of the opacity over life. So if I troll this open, I'll select this preset right here. So we get a nice smooth fade up and fade down in the particle. Now let me put this right on top of the type. And I need to make the transition for the type itself. This is just a simple fractal noise transition. So I'll create a new solid. Let's call this fractal noise. Put this in right above the type. Go to effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. And I'll set the brightness to 100. So it basically becomes a white screen. And over time, I'll animate this so that it goes from 100 to a value that makes the screen kind of turn black, which is around below 100. Let's do 150, negative 150. So let me solo this. It just goes from white and then does a nice little fractal noise transition down to black. So these white to gray to black values I can use on this layer here. So I can pull up my modes and track mats here, and select luma mat, fractal noise. So it's gonna use the luminance as a mat or transparency information for this layer right here. So if I select that, Because it starts out white, we see the type, and then as this fractal noise transitions, it sort of fades away and does a smoky fade like that. Last thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of wind to this. So in the physics section here, we have an air section. I can go into the wind X, Y, or Z and add just a little bit of wind in the x-axis. So as this transitions, the smoke is actually blowing to the right a little bit. Now the cool thing about layer emitters is that when the layer itself has transparency in that area, it stops emitting particles from that area. So as this sort of does this organic fractal noise transition, we stop emitting particles in that area. And it gives it a nice little smoky kind of transition like that.